Well, it's a problem that's grappling, that New York City is grappling with and dealing with all across. Homelessness. Bronx Works Homelessness Department has just started an operations with a new mobile medical testing unit. It works with homeless individuals 24 hours a day and provides some much needed services. Here now to tell us more about the medical, or I should say more about it, is our medical director at Bronx Works, Dr. Andrea Littleton, and uh, we thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Thank you for having me. As I said at the onset, it's a problem that New York City grapples with a lot. Yes. Uh, thousands of people found homeless across New York City, here in the borough of the Bronx, those numbers continue to rise, mm -hmm. but you guys are sing singly putting a, you know, a, a good helping hand to the situation. Trying to do our best. We're trying to put a little dent into helping the homeless find places to stay. I mean, as we all know, affordable housing is a big problem in our city, and now with people losing jobs, it's becoming even a bigger problem. So as of now, our hopeless count, we have over 50,000 individuals who are homeless in the city, and there's uh, half of those are children. So uh, Bronx Bronx work, Works is trying to do their best to try to help with the problem. We have four shelters that we provide uh, shelter services for the homeless individuals, and now we have had an outreach team that goes out 24-7, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. to try to outreach to people who are still living on the street, engage with them, and try to get them into housing. We've been doing that for over a decade, and since 2005, we've reduced the people who are living on the street by 72%, which is great. Uh, we've had a lot of supportive housing that's come up to be able to get people into places. Um, but now, I've been going out with the team once every couple weeks to try to do medical outreach to people who might have medical needs, uh, physical ailments from living out in the street for so long, engage with them in and provide care. Mm -hmm. What kind of numbers are we seeing about in terms of the homeless in the Bronx? Are they, are they rising? Can you give us a little uh, guess? So they're decreasing. We're try doing our best to try to get them in off the street. Like I said, since 2005, we've had about 72% reduction. That's just in the Bronx mm -hmm. um, in terms of getting people off the street. Um, at 2005, we had about 600 people. Now we have about 100 and 50 who are living on the street. Um, so we've really reduced it a lot, but we're still trying to get the rest of everybody into housing and into medical care. Mm -hmm. We've now, we've been doing outreach for them for a long time, um, and we've been doing medical outreach, but we really have just been doing that in a regular car. Uh, now, thanks to support with a uh, Starvis Narcos Foundation, which is a, a grant that we've got, and we've been able to have a medical van um, that's gonna be equipped with an exam table and uh, ophthalmoscope and all my medical equipment. So that I can actually provide a lot more services out on the street. I think that sometimes when you look at the homeless situation, the first thing that people think of is, let me just get them off the street. Right. That's the major thing. Secondly, we don't always think about that medical component and the fact that these people really need a lot of medical services. What are some of the primary services that, that homeless people, you're finding that homeless people require? Well, a lot of them have a lot of just uh, physical ailments from living on the street for so long, so they have a lot of problems with their skin condition, their feet, they have a lot of ulcers and skin breakdown, a lot of fungus. Uh, that's in the, that they get infected with. They also have a lot of the chronic medical problems that most people get that don't get attention to. So hypertension and the diabetes and asthma are all very common ailments. We found that there are much higher rates of hepatitis C and HIV as well in the population and that's why part of our homeless van now we're going to be equipped with doing some mobile testing so that we can actually try to get them the rapid HIV and hep C testing on the street um, so that they could kind of know their status and then be able to better engage in care. Talk to us a little bit about about homelessness and mental illness. Has there been a, you know, sort of like this bridging of the gap? Because um, when we look out, we see a lot of people who are homeless who suffer from mental illness, but yet and still that is not even being treated with. And so while you're providing the medical assistance, what about in the area of mental illness? Yeah, mental illness is a big, big problem. And I mean, I do the work that I do with Bronx Works as with in conjunction with Care for the Homeless, who helps us provide our services. Mm -hmm. We also work with Danny and Medical Services, who are psychiatri psychiatric providers. And and I would say about 80% of our individuals who are living out on the street probably have concurrent mental illness. Um, probably a similar amount have substance abuse problems, either with alcohol or other substances. So uh, trying to address those problems is critical to trying to engage with them and get them into care. Mm -hmm. So we do have a psychiatrist who goes out as well uh, once every other week to engage with our street outreach clients and get them into care, and he'll be using my van too. Speaking of van, talk to me a little bit about the significance of the mobile medical unit. How does that help Bronx Works out? Uh, it's a tremendous help. We've really, as I said, been trying to do a lot of this work already uh, with Care for the Homeless for many years, but we've had a it's been difficult to engage with some clients because of difficulty getting them into our medical clinic that's at the, our drop-in shelter and so to really be able to provide some of this care on the street when we see them um, will be critical to, to engaging with them and trying to get them into regular care. What do you see as the 
long-term effects of having this van out there because uh, it's a beautiful thing to have this van out there. You talked about re being able to reduce homelessness already. Uh, what do you see as the long-term effects of having this van? Well, we're hoping that we're going to be able to engage with more people, get them into care, get them to empower themselves to take care of their health, uh, be well, get themselves into housing. So we're hoping to just really be able to get people to know what, what's going on with their bodies, what's, what's, uh, what things they can help themselves out with and, and get into care. Before we move on, uh, or should I let you go, let me give, it, give us a little bit about housing first and uh, the work that you do with housing first and housing first strategy yeah housing first has really kind of transformed how we engage with our clients in the street and get them into housing um, it started uh, in the early 90s I think uh, with one organization that really tried to do it first didn't really become more publicized until the early 2000s when the Department of uh, Homeless Services and HUD took on the idea that housing first is basically idea that we can get people into housing is their primary priority mm -hmm. um, before that we used to try to think that people needed to be eligible or get some of their medical problems and substance abuse issues in order before they could engage with getting into regular housing. We've kind of reversed that and said, no, we need to get them into housing first now. And we realize that getting them into housing actually can help them address all their other problems once you make that part of their lives a little bit more stable. Are we seeing a lot of permanent housing placements given the fact that you're taking people off of the street? Are we seeing, are we seeing a lot? Are we seeing an increase after you take them off the street to mm -hmm. really get them to a permanent housing place. Are we seeing a lot of transition there? Yes, we've okay. been tre tremendously successful. Like I said, like getting about 72%. That's why we had that great reduction in our people living on the street because we were able to find a place to put them and mm -hmm. uh, supportive housing has been really uh, expanding in, our, in the city and uh, we need a lot more affordable housing, unfortunately. I think for people to keep their housing, um, we need to make things more affordable for people. So I think hopefully with our new mayor, we could get some better policies in getting affordable housing and rent, uh, subsidies for people to help them make their rent and maintain their housing. When I look at the fact of this homeless van and, and really having a van that's targeted with these medical services, it's a new way to really uh, go about engaging the homeless community. Talk to us about this because Obviously, as, as the years progress, you're finding different ways to do these things. Right. Um, so, what you know, the engagement, how, how have things changed down through the years? Yeah, I mean, we've, all, we've always been trying to engage with them, and I think that the idea of the homeless van is in a new one. You know, Children's <laughs> Health Projects has been very successful in using the uh, homeless vans to engage with families that are living in shelters, and we're trying to kind of expand that and now engage with people who are living on the street, some of our more chronically homeless individuals who are the most difficult to engage with. We are realizing that we really need to make things easier for them and make bring the facilities to them uh, rather than trying to get them into the clinic. So for more pe for people who want more information in regards to what you do and how you do it, how do they go about doing that? Uh, we have a website, uh, bronxworks.org, uh, that has a lot of our facilities and what we do. Uh, and also, as I said, I do work with Care for the Homeless, who provi helps provide the medical services, so they can also look at Care for the Homeless's mm -hmm. website as well. You talked about that 72% reduction, and that's a great number. I mean. I Honestly, you know, to have a reduction period is great, but then to say 72%, that's great. Are you guys looked at as a model across the city, across the country? I'd like to think we are, yeah. I know definitely in the city we've definitely had the highest drops in uh, home, getting people off the street. I think that a lot of uh, homeless individuals have subverted to the subway, so I think a lot of our funding is now going to some of our agencies that are helping to engage with clients in the subway system, because uh, that's where a lot of people are going now. Mm -hmm. But I think that they can definitely look at some of the engagement tools that we've used to try to help uh, reduce it in other areas of our city. Well, keep up the good work, and we thank you for coming and sharing thank with you us, Dr. Andrea me. Littleton. Thanks and, uh, we thank you so much for coming. Uh, she's the medical director at Bronx Works, and you just might see her on that van. So uh, thank you very much for coming. Thanks a lot. All righty. Well, we got to take a quick break, but we want you to stay with us because coming up after the break, we're going to take a look at how the Bronx Borough President celebrated Irish Heritage Month. That's when we return in a few.